Hi, in this video we look at how to fix problems with the EGR system. It's called an exhaust gas recirculation system. And specifically here we look at the Ford Maverick or Ford Escape or Mazda Tribute as it's sometimes called and fix uh, an engine light that's come on uh, which says uh, check the engine and when you look at the error codes it comes up with particular error codes which are P0401 or P0402. So this is the check engine light that is showing and if you get yourself one of these cheap OBD2 scanners or you get a garage to read it you'll find, I'm, find that it comes up with a particular engine uh, fault code and there's the OBD2 scanner plugged in just under the dash and in this particular case it was fault code P0401 which is reduced EGR gas flow uh, we've had some other uh, codes uh, due to the EGR valve itself but this video is all about how to diagnose what's wrong with your EGR system so the EGR system is comprised of an EGR valve which is uh, this thing here with a diaphragm on the top this is actually a new one that we changed uh, a while back at uh, the top of the diaphragm is this tube that ultimately connects to the vacuum of your engine via an electrically operated solenoid that engages the vacuum or disengages the vacuum and is the wire to that uh, solenoid here. Uh, so the EGR valve itself, uh, say vacuum operated by electrical control, uh, opens up a valve that connects the exhaust gases, which is this pipe at the bottom, through to the inlet manifold, which is a pipe that you can't really see very well, but goes on the output side of the EGR valve. And what happens is when the valve opens up, it lets some of the exhaust uh, gases flow into the inlet manifold, so back into the engine. Um, because that exhaust gas has already been burnt and therefore can't combust again, putting more of that air back into the engine actually uh, lowers the combustibility of the air because there's no oxygen left in it. Uh, because it's less combustible, then the engine runs uh, at a lower temperature and that reduces the uh, nitrous oxide uh, emissions. And here you can see this is the pipe that comes from the exhaust gases. Goes through a flow restrictor. Right, so here you can see this is the pipe from the exhaust uh, system. And there's two little small pipes that come off this main pipe. And in the middle is a, uh, a small hole flow restrictor. So you get a slight pressure difference uh, between these two pipes when the exhaust gas is flowing down that pipe. This pressure difference is tested by this sensor, which is called the DPFE sensor, Differential Pressure Flow EGR Valve Sensor, which has got an electrical connection to it, this one here, this is the sensor. Uh, these are actually very difficult to obtain and uh, apparently go uh, very frequently, uh, which is what we think has uh, gone on this device. So now I'm going to go over the way to diagnose what the actual fault with your uh, EGR system is. First thing to test in the EGR system is the EGR solenoid. So locate the solenoid as shown previously, uh, pull off the plug and supply your own 12 volts onto the solenoid and you should, if everything's working correctly, uh, hear the engine stutter. as the exhaust gas is supplied into the inlet manifold, as you can hear here. So manually activating the solenoid, as we've just done there, um, activates the EGR bypass valve, which puts more of the combustion gas back into the engine uh, on a uh, full-on continuous basis. That makes the engine uh, stall, or stutter, or slow down, as you uh, just heard. Uh, that means the whole EGR system is actually working, because the solenoid is working, it's letting vacuum onto the diaphragm of the EGR valve. The EGR valve is activating or opening the valve and exhaust gases are flowing into the inlet manifold, which, must, which is what makes the engine stutter. If that uh, doesn't happen, then next thing you do is uh, put a uh, rubber tube uh, onto this diaphragm. So pull this pipe connector off, get a bit of rubber uh, or plastic pipe, such as, uh, such as this stick it on and then suck on it um, that will then activate the diaphragm which activates the EGR valve again the engine should stutter if it doesn't there's a fault either with the EGR valve or with the flow through the pipes 
Um, so you then need to take off the EGR valve by um, bolts underneath. I think there's two bolts either side underneath the valve. Um, look for any blockages in the pipes through to the manifold from the exhaust. And when you suck on the diaphragm, uh, if you suck and then put your tongue on the tube, that vacuum should hold. If it doesn't hold, that means that the diaphragm uh, has got a break in it and the whole EGR valve needs changing. Uh, if it does hold the vacuum okay, then you could take it off and see whether the diaphragm actually moves, whether the valve moves when you suck on the diaphragm. That'll test whether the diaphragm or the valve is stuck. Uh, if that all seems okay, then you, you could have a blockage in your uh, pipe from the exhaust manifold back into the inlet manifold so you need to check through all the pipes make sure there's no blockages and um, if that stud is okay and if when you activate the solenoid the engine does uh, falter but you still got, get a, an engine error code then it means that the DPFE sensor is gone which is this sensor down here it's a very common fault it's an electronic sensor that's sensing the um, pressure of the exhaust gases across a small restriction in the pipe and is basically sensing whether the exhaust gases are flowing. Uh, so the code you'll get when the DPFV uh, sensor is gone is P0401 which uh, means insufficient gas flow and um, which then means uh, you need to test and change the sensor. So you can test the sensor by measuring the uh, voltage coming out of the sensor which should normally be uh, 1 volt and then when you blow on it it goes to a lower voltage blow on the uh, reference input and you'll see a voltage change as we'll see now. So diagnosing the old sensor we've connected uh, temporarily a uh, rubber tune to the reference uh, sensor input and uh, measuring the voltage between the orange wire and the black and green wire we're actually getting 4.85 volts. Should be getting one volt there. Uh, just for information the um, supply voltage to the sensor is 5 volts, so between the orange and the black and white wire is 5 volts. And as I say, should be getting 1 volt out from the sensor output through green and black. So 4 volts is completely off. We could try blowing on the tube as well to see if that makes any difference. There's no change in output voltage on the old sensor. So it starts off with a completely wrong voltage, and there's no change in the voltage when you blow on it, which shows that the sensor is completely gone. So now we put the new sensor on, uh, which is this thing here, plugged it in, put the uh, rubber tubes uh, on from the old one, which don't come with the new sensor, and temporarily just put uh, a bit of plastic tube poked in to the sensor, which is on the long tube, which I think says, uh, duh, 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 actually it says ref on that one. Right, so I'm using that uh, plastic tube to create the pressure manually, just by blowing it on with my mouth, and at the same time, I'm going to actually test whether the sensor is working by measuring the voltage. So there's three wires that go to the sensor, which we've made some little cuts in the insulation. Hopefully you can see down there. Is that coming out okay? And we've got a voltmeter on a 20 volt uh, range. Have the ignition on. Is the ignition on the Yep. And we measure between, I think, the orange and the, the green and black wire. Uh, we're typically reading one volt. And if we blow into a tube, you see the voltage drop down to about 0.2 of a volt as you increase the pressure, which shows that the sensor is actually measuring the pressure and the sensor is working. So on this car, we originally had a fault with the EGR valve, which had a leak in the diaphragm, which we changed. And then a year later, um, came up with a different error code. Uh, the original code when the DGR valve went was P0402, which was, what was the description, Jason? No gas at all going for it. No gas flow in yeah. the EGR system. So we changed the valve. Um, that was okay for a little while, but then the check engine uh, light came on again. And this time it's the DPFE sensor, we've, which we've just changed. Uh, it was definitely faulty because we measured the voltage and it wasn't working. And the new one definitely is working. So this is the old part, the DPFE sensor that came off. Dead easy to uh, break the pipes when you're pulling it off the tubes. Uh, that just broke off there. Um, but even um, ignoring the fact that the plastic had broken off, the voltages out of the unit were completely wrong, so it definitely failed. 
Uh, very expensive, very difficult to get hold of in the UK. Um, none of the motor factors had it, none of the local Ford garages had. Uh, there was one Ford garage that quoted £150, a uh, ridiculous price. Uh, so with the power of the internet, I managed to look up a motorcraft parts DPFE for but look up a part that's compatible with uh, this number on the back. This, this part number is y, YF1E9J460-AD. Uh, if you search enough on the internet, you'll find some generic or more generic parts that are uh, compatible with that. And this Motocraft DPFE4 parts uh, was compatible. The tubes were exactly the same size. The connector was the same size. And it was £50. Pounds including shipped, postage. Including postage. Priority postage. Shipped from the States via eBay. And arrived, uh, amazingly, within two days. So that's the thing to do to keep your car on the road. Uh, so now we've changed uh, both. The EGR system should be fully operational again. And all we've got to do now is clear the engine error code. For which you'll need um, a fairly cheap OBD2 uh, sensor or um, dongle, it's not a sensor, which is uh, a dongle, which is, where is it Jason, plugged in somewhere, plugged in one of these little things based on the, doesn't say on there, but I think they're based on the ELM327 chipset, I think, fairly cheap, about £12, pounds. plugs into the OBD2 port, which is under the dashboard somewhere, in this case, it is under there, <laughs> which is there. Then we connect to the uh, Wi Fi of the dongle using an iPhone or any other smartphone with Wi Fi and the right app store on it, which probably means Android or iPhone. So the Wi Fi hotspot in this particular case is called CLK Devices. Okay, so now we're connected. And then we have downloaded an app which is EOBD fact file. It's quite a few of them, but that's certainly good enough. And then we go into connection, connect to the device. Select the manufacturer, which is fine, probably not essential, but might as well select the correct one. And I believe it's under diagnostic, isn't it? Yeah. Diagnostic, we look at trouble codes, and there's the old trouble code that was on PO401. I don't know what that one that's new, but that should... yeah, there's some other codes that are also associated with the same fault. Yeah, so the P1409 that's because we disconnected the solenoid, that's triggered another code. Uh, the P1405 that's because we were taking the hoses off, I think. Uh, while we were testing and fitting the parts. So now we'll uh, reset the codes. Clear DTC. Trouble code successfully deleted. And just to confirm, we can look at the trouble codes again. And P000 means no trouble codes. So that should be the car completely fixed. All of the sensors and valves have been changed. And job done. Uh, hopefully that helps somebody else. Thanks for watching. Bye.